All right, welcome everyone. Uh, we have this incredible opportunity to witness, to meet one of the best designers in the industry today. Chris will present him officially, officially, but we have uh, Mr. Dermot Power today to talk about his work, which I think is a gigantic luxury. Chris? Yeah, as Nick was saying, we're incredibly lucky. Uh, we've been been harassing Dermot now for going on, what, six months? And uh, finally pinned him down, and uh, we have him here to answer all of our questions. Um, Dermot's work is, is uh, you know it. <laughs> if you've watched any movies the last 20 years, you know his work. He's worked on some of the biggest franchises in film history, including uh, the Harry Potter series, uh, the Star Wars series. He's done numerous films with uh, one of our personal favorites, Mr. Tim Burton, which we'll have a lot of questions for, uh, around their collaborations. Um, yeah, and we're absolutely completely uh, astounded and excited to have Dermot here to uh, meet with us. So Dermot. Uh, if you want to say hi to everyone, you can feel free. Hi, this is from my uh, studio over here in London. You might notice it's dark where I am because it's what time is it nine there? O'clock in the evening. Nine o'clock. <laughs> yeah. yeah, originally we usually do these around seven p.m. And when I did the math, I was like, "Ooh, that'll be like four a.m. for <laughs> for you." Yeah, that's so, work. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's um, fine. Let's start, uh, dive in. Maybe uh, we can start with uh, some of your early influences and just kind of how you got into uh, art in general and what led you to working in film. Um, I know you had spoke a little bit from some of the previous interviews I found of yours uh, of artists like Simon Beasley and Brian Bolland being big influences. Yeah. Um, if you can speak to that yeah. a bit, that'd be great. Yeah, I mean, when I first came over to London, I was trying to be an illustrator and kept getting knocked back in, in interviews. Um, people were saying that my stuff looked too kind of comic booky, and um, I don't know why really, but. I used to, I, there was a kind of gap. I used to read comics a lot when I was a kid and then I stopped reading them. So kind of six or seven years later, I was, when I was hearing that this, I was like, okay, I'm going to go back and look at the comics, 2000 AD and stuff. And I couldn't believe the stuff that was being done. First of all, I couldn't believe how good people like Brian Bolland were back in the day. But you know, when you're a kid, you don't like, they're just amazing drawings. You just think you don't really consider it. But then when, when I saw Bisley stuff and the way he was painting and Glenn Fabry, I was really shocked. It was like, wow, that's what that's what comics have become. I couldn't believe it. And Bill Sinkovich and people like that. And um, so, yeah, I got back into I got into the comic book industry inspired by that, really. And um, I don't know how much I mean, then. Learned my trade as a comic artist over the next um uh eight years and the problem is i was quite slow as a comic artist and um because we were the tradition in the u.s is you have a penciler and inker and a colorist and you know the writer the team is all broken up but at that period when i joined comics in, in the uk we were trying to do the kind of we were all doing what bill sinkovich did over in the u.s which is paint and draw everything which is very time consuming and um but then when i hopped over to film that was fantastic training for film um because just all the things i would do to try to be a fast comic artist uh, i kind of brought it brought into uh, my work as a film artist and i think as well because the kind of comics i did judge dread and that took care of the kind of sci-fi side but then when I did um, Slain, Pat Mills wrote Slain. Um, that was, I was doing a kind of a King Arthur story. So I was having to make um, up costumes and characters continuously as I was going along. So I got into, I got into that um, habit of research for character design without really knowing that was even a career that I could do. Did you find working in comics at all, uh, the idea that you have to do kind of everything yourself in terms of environment design, uh, costume design, character design, did that make transitioning to film um, a lot easier, you think? Oh, yeah, a, that, a lot easier training? and a lot more difficult because a lot easier because I would say that Fabry Bisley, John Bolton, all these fully painted artists, Dave McKean, you know, um, you don't have a ready, you don't have as, as um, established set of like if you uh, of faces and poses like i think you know if people want to learn how to draw how to draw comics the marvel way is a, an amazing 
it's a brilliant book the John Buscema drawings and that and everything are amazing and but you can end up with a stock set of comic book looking faces and characters or whatever but when you're painting you kind of can't do that and that makes you like one of the dangers of a going from comics to film is you can you you don't want to have a comic book style in film I mean you can have but you don't want to have it just looking like that um but where it was difficult was I was used to being the star that you come into an art department and um you kind of feel okay I've you know I can draw and design anything and then I mean that's what you think I'm not saying you can um and you then it's kind of strange in a in a in a traditional film art department it took me quite a while to realize that it's not just about picking the best person to do the best design you think it would be or it's more about keeping a supervising art director will be keeping his troops happy by parceling out tasks i say he because it was always a he back 20 years ago um but they parcel out tasks to the to the people in the art department and then They've got a hierarchy that they're climbing and it, it can be um <clears throat> uh you know there, there's a you're not there's a lot of politics i guess there isn't every single job but when you're used to being a comic artist sitting at home just drawing everything yourself just worrying about getting your stuff in on the deadline you're not really involved in the politics so um i think what happened to me was what was useful was the very first job i did um was Merlin for TV for Hallmark for the director, Steve Barron. And um, the costume designer called me up and started, um, was really annoyed that I was doing costumes and was, you know, like, cause it was step, stepping on her toes. And then the production designer called me up and he was saying, uh, oh, what's the budget of that, that visual you did? What's the budget for that set? I'm like, I don't, I don't know. And then he was like, well, you know, don't fucking draw that. Because <laughs> so I was like, oh, I'm stepping on his toes. So you go, oh, okay, this is not going to, you're not just going, you have to get used to, you have to set aside, you have to have thick skin. I guess we all know that. But um, you, you have to know that you're, it'll, you may not be celebrated <laughs> in the way that you're hoping. That's all. Um, so what was working not, for Steve Barron like? He seems like a really interesting director. I know he did the, I think the first Ninja Turtles movie as well. He did, yeah, uh, and he did all those awesome. videos like the yeah, um, um, Michael Jackson, uh, Billy Jean, and the Ha video with the pencils and mm -hmm. loads of stuff. He's incredibly nice. He's really, uh, but he he's like the uh, Dormouse in um, Alice in Wonderland. He's just a really sleepy, quiet, <sighs> calm character. And again, what's really interesting about that, I went from Steve to another director, Nick Willing. And Nick Willing is, I mean, Nick is like the Mad Hatter. And he was directing the first Alice in Wonderland that I worked on. And Steve is like the doormat. I mean, they're, one is a completely manic energy and the other is really sleepy. And what are, what are again, it's really interesting with these kind of characters because I think your job as a designer in the film industry is to is to know the story of the thing you're designing, but also know the story. That's funny. I never showed Tim that, um, but know the, <laughs> know the, um, know the story of the characters that you're, that you were working with and, and working around and working for. So knowing that the director, like for example, Steve will be very quiet. And that means he needs not needs, but, he he gets people who battle for him. So I remember the production designer, one of the films I worked with, Steve, Steve was not very happy because the production designer accepted the budget that he was given. Right? And he was like, no, no, he has to fight. You, he has to fight the producers because Steve wasn't going to fight because he's quiet, you know? And um, But Nick Willing would be the opposite. Nick would be um, just really, I mean, I'm great to work for both of them, but just very different. And... Um, and I, I'm probably the same with, you know, Tim as well. He's, 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 they're all very different characters. So it does well to be ready to adapt, to, to almost design yourself for the situation, which um, as, as opposed to just d designing what you're doing. Interesting. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. 
And you said you've you've never shown this this short story to to Tim. Tim Burton, no, no. I keep... Wait, see. <laughs> What's the story behind this? I, I guess like the well, Genesis it's Gareth Ennis. Like... Gareth Ennis yeah. is another Irish uh, comic. Uh, well, he's mad. He's hugely famous. Gareth. He did the Boys. He wrote the original mm -hmm. comic book for that was the uh, was became the Boys on Amazon. Um, Gareth has a very dark sense of humor and. Um, I did a few Judge Dredd stories and they were always really brutal. And um, yeah, that was just Teddy Chappermitz, but he's got chainsaws for fingers. And he's like the, instead of the Midas turn, turning everybody to gold, he just kills everybody he touches, including the woman he's <laughs> in love with. Um, but the thing about Tim Burton is that I used to be uh, a total goth when I was a teenager. And I remember saying that to Tim and... Uh, it really sounded like I was trying to ingratiate myself with him. Do you know what I mean? Like I was yeah. like saying, oh, yeah, I used to be a goth as well. I was like you. But I was. But so if I showed him this, I'm not, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what his reaction would be. You lose your, your goth card? <laughs> well, no, he, he would. Um, I just. Uh, he, well, anyway, Tim Burton's kind of. Um, <laughs> an eccentric character you if you say something to him you may not get exactly the reaction you expect it it won't be a bad reaction you just yeah. be like did did that we, annoy him i don't know you know we've got a bunch more slides with with him and especially the the wednesday work so i'm I, i'm excited oh, yeah, to hear yeah. more about yes. it uh was there any questions from the comments yet jeremy um Pardon? could be relevant at least to early work. oh sorry from comments where how do i see that uh, uh jeremy's got them there so don't worry oh, about sorry. it yeah. he'll, he'll funnel them to you uh, oh, sorry. I thought you said Dermot. I, I, no. <laughs> yeah. No. 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 Um, we've got a few. Um, uh, you know, general kind of stuff. Uh, one. Uh, one person wrote, "How do you choose a topic or a subject for a viz dev portfolio?" But I think that might be more towards the end, maybe to discuss. Yeah, that. as we get maybe towards portfolio, I think that yeah. would be a good one. Yeah. Um, one thing I did want to ask real quick, Dermot, I had on the first slide here was Mick McMahon was so I see, I would say idiosyncratic for those 2000 AD books, at least later. And but I yeah. see a lot of his kind of graphic shape language in your work. Is that maybe oh, more Sinkevitz yeah. than than Mick, or or is there a lot of Mick McMahon possibly influenced at least your oh, your film work that I see? Um, well, Mick McMahon is definitely a huge influence, but he's sort of um, he he's so kind of um, unique and, and and unusual in the in the way he draws you can't you couldn't imitate him you could imitate barland and get it wrong but i wouldn't even know how to start imitating Mick mcmahon it, it, it's so him I, I don't know if you've got the american have you seen the american yeah the, that's that's my favorite thing he's done it's incredible uh so uh, so american. a huge influence that he would have had on me is just just making things chunky okay and um you know so that comes from dread all the big padding and and I love, um, again, it's a shape thing. You want to be able to read. He's just brilliant at, 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 at making you feel the texture of the thing he's drawn. Like Sergio Topi as well, which is they they use lines that don't seem to be in any way, you sh shouldn't be descriptive of what the lines are describing, but they describe them beautifully. Like, you know, Mike McMahon does that as well. You, 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 it's not just the lines are accurate depictions of, um he's, he's not collecting uh, he's making you feel the thing that's what i love to do as well is I, I realized sometimes you do things slightly wrong because it makes you feel the thing bit more than if you did it correctly like a classic example from comics is if you're if you i i remember one of the things i did that helped me a lot at the beginning of my career was i took maury bridge's drawings of people walking and running and i just drew a copy them and the reason they're so good is because Murray Bridge took them from a very long lens in, you know, the little black and white mm -hmm. ones from the 1890s or whatever. And you realize, oh, OK, when you're drawing a person running, for example, it's not there's not an awful lot of um, dynamism in the pose. And then what you do in comics is you have to exaggerate that a little bit. And so one of the classics is foreshortening. If I will cheat that all the time because if, if I've got a fist coming out, unless it's like a giant fist, you're doing one of those kind of things. You want to see a bit of length of arm to, to feel that, to read that. So sometimes you, you 
cheated even like with wednesday here it's kind of that drawing that i did for yeah. netflix yeah. um like every shape in that silhouette i want you to be able to read it really simply without even thinking about it but it's not particularly accurate those her neck is too there's loads wrong with it but it's it's more correct to the feeling i want to give across so my, my man was amazing like in the american the other thing he did was like he'd have the badges on the side on the shoulders mm. i said he was amazing he is amazing he's still around and um i loved how the badge was so heavy it ha held its own shape on the shoulder that's oh, just really yeah, anyway was, i'll talk about i, was, I know i'm just gonna bring up so we know what we're talking about uh, yeah he's american. yeah if you see the american i mean I've, there are some of the comics i still keep on my shelves yeah, it's it's this is probably my favorite work of his was was this particular book. Um, yeah, look at that guy there with the, look that top. Look at that shoulder pad. It's exactly what I'm yeah. talking about. Last American there, and you see the way that gun. He's all the shine, all the the lines are all dead straight, completely. Um, you know, it's not realistic, but you feel more looking at that about the textures than a realistic drawing would. I mean, that's that's classic illustration it's not anything new to say that but yeah he's a he's a master cool. and topi as well sergio topi absolutely you got bisley i mean and Bar barland and bisley yeah the, i mean the thing about all these guys is that's what i got out of comics because i was so crushed by it it was impossible <laughs> it really was so though it was absolutely you, you couldn't it's like you're in a, a race and you just cannot catch up with people. So I came so you out. Felt like you freed up then going into film from well, comics by accident because I got on to Star Wars and um, we had so much to do. Like I think I did about five hundred costumes in the year, and I didn't have didn't have time. And Trisha Bigger, the costume designer, was um, didn't want us myself and Ian to go into any detail. Ian would though. I mean. You know, Ian's another. Funny enough, when I met Ian, when I went over there, I took a, I kind of dipped because he's too good. He's too, he's too much. I was too influenced by him it, it, for for a moment. I, I mean, I love being around Ian, and I, I learned a huge amount from him, and I still do. Um, but sometimes you, you need to be. You know, you, you know, I can if like. I can lay all my drawings out from Star Wars episode two and I can see where I was with Ian and I can see where I met Rob Bliss, who's one, one of my, well, Rob is probably my best friend, my closest friend. Um, and we work a lot together, but I have to not be influenced by Rob, for example, because I tried to be like him for, for a day and then I just can't do it. Um, but so this level of detail suits me. So I was just, and that comes from trying to do that's kind of similar to the level of detail I was doing in comics. And, um, you know, it, it, my thing is make the point and move on. And that's very much for comics. If you're looking at a comic book page, it's different to a, an illustration and a book because you don't want the person reading the book to stop. You want them to enjoy it and move, get, get onto the next panel, onto the next panel. Um, so that's, I think that was, I brought that into, into, uh, into film. Were you a big, uh, Star Wars fan prior to working on episode Oh gosh, two? yeah, yeah, massive. Yeah. Yeah. I was nine when it came out. So I was just. What was that like, I guess, going into Star Wars when I, for most of us, and we kind of talk about in the department a lot where Star Wars really kind of solidified the idea of visual development or concept art as a, as a discipline, as a dedicated discipline. What was that like going on to a new Star Wars project? Having kind oh, of grown I, up probably with that stuff and then being like, I'm actually now setting the tone for what's going to be probably the next uh, time. Yeah, it was unbelievable. Um, but I'll tell you, the thing is, the first day on it, I was I had, like, I had to wait for America to wake up to four o'clock. And I was like, Jesus, I'm in Star Wars. Here we go. And I had to just do a some just, just leave that to a side and, and just get on with it and, uh, big, and not feel. Um, the, the weight of it and just do what I do and trust it. Um, but it was really, I loved it. I absolutely, it was, it was great fun. And, you know, I, I, I had a little golden era because before it wasn't so much great fun when it came back for episode seven, but on episode two, um, you know, I stayed at Skywalker ranch. <laughs> 
that's wow. just ridiculous for for a you know to know as a i mean i mean the thing is um i loved it when i was a kid and again like comics i drifted away from it because my peers in a little town in ireland none of them were interested in it and then i when i started doing comics and i, I remember the meeting chris um cunningham the director and because he was a comic artist in 2008 as well about where you're gone how it, it seemed like episode two was when the digital process kind of became main not mainstream but kind of solidified and, and normalized uh versus episode one which seemed like it still had some traditional work was that the case when you were on episode two yeah where it was because what happened was i was here in london and uh doug contacted me and doug chang and he i said oh he said oh we're having a meeting to discuss the next one next you know tomorrow i said oh do you need some do you need me to send you some work um, and he went, well, have you got time to scan it in? I was like, well, I, I'm, it's all digital. There's, there's no scanning. I don't have to scan anything. And then Doug said, that's digital, the stuff you sent already. Uh, he, they were not using it. They'd used a tiny little bit. And I think I, I, when I went into film in 97, I never drew on paper again. Everything was digital from then on. So they had, I think for episode one, they had augmented some visuals digitally. And then by the time I came in, they were still drawing on paper. And then everybody, um, you know, I had a lot of conversations with people about, oh, it's just not the same and all that kind of thing. And then that goes out the window. I think even Ian started doing <laughs> digital stuff eventually. But um, yeah. Cool. And I guess, how did your, I think you touched on a little bit, how did your experience with episode two compare with uh you know, 15 years later with episode three or the three, oh, episode, me, seven. episode seven, excuse me. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. There's no comparison. I, I didn't enjoy episode seven. It was, well, um, the different, okay. So JJ Abrams is very funny, but it's hard to get information from him. Uh, and so I don't know. I, I, look, I was spoiled on episode two and we would sit around and talk to George Lucas, especially with costume. We'd sit and sit around the table and actually talk to him. And he would tell us, talk to us about, um, you know, what Natalie, Port you know, what Amidala had become now. Um, and there's whole conversations about <laughs> that bit in the, in the film where she gets her midriff of her costume ripped off. That was because I had done a drawing with of like of her you know and he was like oh maybe we can do that whatever so there was a lot of you could get into it and and um by the time we were on episode seven i was working from london instead of it being a few of the few concept artists it just felt like everybody you just felt every morning you'd come into work and you'd see what the guys in the us had done the night before and whatever you were doing there was somebody else doing a better version than you somewhere else it was very frustrating and and um then i moved over to costume and i was asked to go over to help to design um the jedi killer uh, uh, kylo ren and he was called jedi killer then and the cost the designs that you're seeing up now are one are my early designs which i still think are my best designs on episode seven and i think they work very well and then they got worse and worse and worse as as JJ, he just didn't, he couldn't make up his mind and he didn't know what he wanted. And um, it was all sort of, I mean, it's part, again, it's my fault for not being able to, to connect with him. Some directors you don't connect with, but I mean, again, he's very funny and engaging and you chat about other things, but um, he would just look at what you did and, you want to get in what's the character what is the character meant to be right like tell me but he wouldn't get into that so he was constantly telling me what he didn't want and then three months of trying to do something within this narrow range i was just i couldn't do anything and then um glenn came in one day because glenn was not tasked with doing the glenn dylan the who designed kylo ren's mask Glenn wasn't tasked with designing him. He was just pitching stuff in. And one day he got traction with that um, with that Kylo Ren mask. And um, the rest is history, which I have 
heard uh, JJ tell the myth of how Kylo, and I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I gotta be honest, I was, I'm very pleased for Glenn, but it was not, I was not pleased for me. I was like, not to be too critical or, or anything you can't get into, but what was your feeling on the final Kylo Ren mass design? I mean, what, in, in, in terms oh, well, of how it, it, compared to yours, like like what was the big shift in in terms of what JJ maybe was was drawn? He to? he saw what Glenn did first was three stripes, and he had them in yellow, mm -hmm. so they looked like Bruce Lee's um, Enter the Dragon. It looked like Kill Bill. You know, it was quoting the seventies. Glenn is brilliant at that. He just just to the, the yellow striping with the black is great because that's hazardous that's wasp that's that's scary that's dangerous so that initial yeah. block in uh looked really good i i was sad to see that go of looking through the concept art yeah but then what we did was thought okay we'll do them chrome then and then i did a i took glenn's um thing helmet and, and put brought it into modo and did an animation with fire and flames reflecting in the thing so i thought it's going to look cool when there's when it's orange you know but yeah the yellow um i wouldn't i couldn't have done it it wouldn't have come out of my head that that design so it was exactly what jj wanted and what he what he needed um i the other luxury we had on on episode two is everything we did got used for something um so and if it didn't work you might think that's a, not a good idea, but it has worked amazingly well in Star Wars. Like there's lots of abandoned designs for one thing become something else because they need so many shapes. And, um, you know, all the Sith, Sith, she, you know, um, she became a Sag Ventress. That was a Sith. And I think I posted on Instagram a couple of days ago. I had loads of different that's designs cool. for Sith, um, creatures, uh, different ethnicities, you know everything um but they all most of them by the time i was working in australia i remember walking into the costume department and uh yeah let me see i can pull it up here if it's uh handy yeah is it this uh, one here the, yeah there look that one over there that's a sith that was a sith design and i just love this because um when i was a kid i saw the original amiga man and when they had mm -hmm. the white contacts and i just thought that would be amazing and you kind of that's the charlton heston one right the yeah the yeah, 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 yeah 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 freaked me out when, when i was about eight i saw it and and i'm sure it doesn't hold up to scrutiny oh, no, it's now but yeah but <laughs> i was funny enough as a little side story is that it, my there. older brothers on sunday night they were allowed to downstairs to watch sunday night at the movies on irish television and it was deemed that i was the right age i was old enough now so i was called down to watch it and it was the Amiga man, but they, my parents had no idea what that was. And it cool. freaked me out because it was horrifying, but also yeah. there's pretty strong sex scenes in it. Yeah. Right? 70s. So I'm, I'm sitting there as a nine year old and my dad was reading the newspaper mm -hmm. and I was like, oh my God, it's so uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it had a profound effect on me and it's, um, it's manifested itself 20 years later as the Sith. Um, as as I said, but anyway, all of those characters would be used someplace else. That's what I was going to say. And when I went to Australia uh, to work on the project, and I walked into the costume department, there's just these amazing cutters, and they just like this is what I mean about not having to draw too much detail. You would do a, I remember um, one of the creature, uh, which one? What is the guy with the three eyes? That uh, character, can't remember his name, but in episode two or seven episode i redid him for episode two um he's yeah. one of the cantina guys with the i forget his name jeremy I don't know. yeah i can't remember his name. <laughs> anyway i remember i remember i did the the shoulders with these little three kind of lines cutting or whatever very simple line and then you see cutters just capture exactly what you did in cloth with very little information i mean that was the 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 um the joy of working like that that you didn't need to go into great detail if, if you had really good people coming after you i mean that's that was the what was the size of the the concept art team for episode two versus episode seven i mean you said there's a lot more it sounded like on seven um on episode two there was myself and ian doing costumes and character well not not creatures but 
Um, and then, of course, you're going to have people in VFX, so I'm not really counting them. But, I, I mean, they count. I'm just saying I don't... They're locked in, I, in the ILM castle. I don't necessarily know how many people in there would have been doing things. Um, and I know later on, uh, Eric and Ryan came in after we'd finished. So it's a little confusing. But there was... Uh, one, two, three, maybe eight of us or nine of us, and then maybe 10, you know, but then on episodes, look, the industry has changed. I, when I did the latest, cause I did the fantastic beast art books, I think there was 60 artists wow. that I was contacting. There's like, it's in, in some ways it's amazing. It's fantastic. It's, it's more work. It's the, the industry has expanded, but just, um, I was spoiled on episode two. It was, you had time to design a character, think it through. I, okay, I'm, I'm contradicting myself. You didn't have time in that they wanted stuff very quickly, but you had time in that you you weren't drawing something knowing somebody else is drawing it hmm. at the same time or two other people. Um, and you could think, well, does that matter? And it should, it, it shouldn't matter, except it, except it, it can affect the way you work. Because you're, you're kind of, I in my head, it's a, the visual I have is you're trying to do a hundred meters race and beauty contest mixed together, you know, in high heels, like everybody running to the finish line, trying to be, it's just, it, it it's not a comfortable way to work. That was my feeling. Whereas if you work for somebody like, you know, I work a lot with Stuart Craig, production designer of Harry Potter. Stuart doesn't care how long things take to, to get done. Um, he just lets you do it he doesn't put people in competition with each other he just or not so much anyway um but uh, it mightn't be very fair of me to say that because other people had wonderful experiences on episode seven it's just for me it was um it wasn't so great well it's inter interesting to hear that because i know that we only see obviously the front facing uh the final product and then also the work that kind of filters out i, I think your your designs i know jeremy speaks about them all the time about particularly your Kylo iterations and how, how much cooler it could have been <laughs> possibly uh, in well, some ways, just because they're, I, and I don't mean to poop on the, the design that came out, but uh, there was definitely some cool stuff there. The designs, the, the what could have been, um, yes, I when, when you post your work, uh, when you post your explorations of things, I tend to like uh, your explorations more than what ended up being gone with. Um, and, uh, I think that you, as uh, pertaining to this slide here, uh, one of my big questions was, you know, how do you, you've worked on a number of franchises now, a number of really, really well-known, uh, properties, I guess would be a way to describe it. And yeah. I find that your approach is always has an, an infusion of freshness. you you have a boldness where you, you're not, you're not, you're not, um, precious with what's come before and you're ready to inject some new blood into it. And I was kind of wondering what your approach was with that. Why, you know, why that seems to be such a strong element. Is that a focus for you when you enter a project or is it? A I, I, th I think I get bored really quickly. And what I was saying earlier is that um, I, I, I say this a lot that it, it I, I'm a little bit um, split in my mind when I'm drawing and um, my best way of explaining it, and you guys are artists as well, so you might get this, is you can draw, when you're bored, you draw, you draw there's, there's the artistic part of you who, who, that draws well when it's excited and interested. And then there's another part of you that can draw okay because it's been in the company of the artistic part that starts doing things when the artistic part, part's just gone. That's what it feels like when I'm bored. I just can't do it. And sometimes that can be so. So what makes me, I think, good at being a concept artist is, is at the beginning, I was like, well, I got to earn, I got to pay my rent. So, OK, I got to find what is it interesting about this? And then you then you then you find, OK, what is it? Um, so what's the story of this thing? So then also I've got this whole background in comics, which is about s strong, simple shapes. and. I've also have this, I'm not, except when I go in, I do a lot of 3D work for environments and stuff. Um, I can, it's different there, but when I do character stuff, when I try to go in and met, go into more detail, it just doesn't work. I can't do it. It just mm -hmm. looks, it just looks like I don't know what I'm doing. It starts mm -hmm. to get too detailed. And I've 
lots of friends who work in that style who are a lot more detailed and I just step off earlier and I think it looks fresher because I'm I'm it's like ah that'll do that'll do but but the other thing that is very important I think is um I'm not sketch they're not sketchy they're minimal it's a big difference yeah. And I've because I've often sometimes people will show me work and I go, no, that's 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 sketchy. That's just ooh. like if you if if you go into a life drawing class and you're just sketching in a minute, that's very different to to see if you can do it in just line or something. That's that's a different approach. Yeah. So these are even even these um ones from Beowulf. Um I worked into these a little bit with color. Um but those shapes are there. If um, if you watch the way I work, I'm, I'm throwing shapes down very quickly and undoing them and putting another one and then cutting little bits off them to get a pleasing shape, which can look like I just did a happy accident. But it, it's it's a happy accident combined with a little finessing of edges and 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 um tightening up the shapes and I also have if a you video look at them, that you sent I, I, I mean i can oh, show yeah, that here yeah. and you can just walk, talk through it um is that about yeah. as far as you go this one here in terms of like refinement yeah, Would yeah that be about it. as far as you go okay yeah because because um, okay if you look at that one in particular okay go back but yeah yeah you can watch this folks yeah so this is a video i'm trying to do for um a tutorial so it the, this is sped up this is two minutes but it was an hour an hour long drawing um and it shows my approach to drawing, which is about shapes. And I'm trying to do this as a tutorial and, and narrate it. I'm finding that quite difficult though. Um, but uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, I keep, I just start, and then I try to write it. And then anyway, I'll get there. I'm, I'm, I've got to practice it. Um, so this is me talking about shape language, about having in the tutorial, <laughs> that would be longer, but um, I think this explains a lot of it, which is you're putting down shapes. The, the mark you put down is like, I'm talking to illustrators here, so you guys know all this, but um, the marks you were putting down are reacting to a mark you've just put down, for example. You know, you're not, you're, you're not just, um, in fact, when I was breaking this down, trying to examine it, I think you do things intuitively without really thinking too hard about it. So everything is kind of, exploding out from the center of him and then it's been captured by the shapes at the edges but i'm not i'm not doing that in a deliberate way it's just i'm just doing what i i think um i think it's really interesting how you use line where you're i, I love that it's shape based and you're you're actually putting line in after the fact um as like yeah. an accent as opposed to doing a quick sketch and then blocking it in from that sketch yeah in fact that that was one of the things i all the star wars stuff i did is all line it's all very like how i used to work in the real with real materials and then I thought oh you can do it backwards you can just put down the shapes and put the line in afterwards um and then take them out and then put them back again because often it's scaffolding isn't it you're just putting in shapes lines to guide where you're going to go and then just like the, this guy that you know I put the little hat on the dormouse and then I was like oh no just take it out it's better if he's got the teapot cover on him when it comes so to have, playing that's that's the shape obviously shape color value those are the key elements for design so starting with those big broad areas seems like it's you know uh, it's i mean that's efficient what we teach essentially here right um it's ironic that some people don't follow that uh path when they go into uh, projects but with your work what's interesting about it is that it's so clear that that's to me you know i i think your your adherence to shape-based kind of stuff is part of the success of your work um that's what what I, one of the things i find really appealing about it and i think it's a great way to kind of bear focus um so that kind of just happened organically with you huh yeah yeah but i think what happens is like one of the things um when i started out you'd look at sinkovich or bisley or somebody or fabry go, how do they do that and then you try to do it and you do it entirely wrong <laughs> and take forever right and then yeah. you realize oh they, they didn't go to all that much trouble they just so they work the same way traditionally right where they're blocking in with like markers and washes and then doing line work like they're going from, um well from what i've seen no yes and no i mean there's a there's a very there's a tradition of putting down lines and then putting a wash across and then carving mm -hmm. the shape out and then going back in with lines um okay. but but i used to have kind of arguments with um 
like Rob and, and Chris Cunningham and stuff. And I think, I think Greg agreed with me. I can't remember Greg Staples, but I thought um, when you look at Frazetta's work, he collects, he collects light by using glazes and transparent medium around light up to the light. And they always read it in reverse. They said, no, no, no. He's starting with thin layers of light paint and he's bringing it down. I'm like, no, he's not because that would just take forever. And then that's how they did their work in 2000 AD. And Rob would do these incredibly detailed and beautiful um, paintings with by layers of thin washes of light paint. And I just mm. didn't have the patience. I'm like, no, no, no. Cause it, 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 but that, but you're, you're, you're not leaving anything to accident that way. You're just trying to control every bit of it. But if you look at Frazetta stuff, yeah. it means chunky and blocky and then he throws a shape. And the other thing I learned a lot from Frazetta is put the detail where you want the person to look. You know, you look at Death Dealer, his hooves, there's nothing there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's just, it's a, it's a masterpiece, but it, it, there's nothing there. Um, yeah. The other thing I was getting into here is just always, if you've got lots of curves, um, you want to, oh, am I gone out of? No, no, you're still good. Yeah. Um, if you, if just talking about a technique thing, if people are listening, I'm, again, you guys know this, but if you find your, I, I, I said it today to a production designer I'm working for at the moment that um, you don't want things to become a bag of snakes. So if you're putting all these curves in, put straight, find excuses to put straight lines in just so that, the curves have something to push off and it's more pleasing as well it's just it's less boring so yeah it seems like part of that is just the tools even you use where you're using a lot of primitives uh, even your brushes are like blocks so even if you're doing something oh, yeah. like an organic rendering or organic object you're doing it with like these blocky geometric pieces that kind of uh counter yeah that. yeah yeah you, you just um best owl i ever painted was with a big flat brush and no you know, on Slain, I, I have it here. But I, when I did Slain, the comic book, it was very different from the beginning to the end. By the end, I was in a hurry and I'd learned, trying to hit the deadlines, and I'd learned how to use more blocky shapes. And um, it's it's just like, a, it's amazing how fluffier an owl looks if it's done with blocks of shapes. It's 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 opposed to uh, every smooth feather. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, you don't want to. Yeah. You just it's the overall impression. Uh, Jeremy, was there any questions from the the chat? Uh, oh, quite a few. Relevant? Uh, well, Let's throw uh, a few out. You mentioned oh, having worked with Chris Cunningham. Uh, would you say what project you, it was you worked with? Worked with him on? With Chris, uh, Chris Cunningham. Cunningham. Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, well, I first met him on Judge Dread. I I wasn't on it as a concept artist. The Stallone yeah. one. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was mm -hmm. that came on for a few. That yeah. monster he designs is one of my favorite, or the Mean Machine. The Mean Machine, and then also the robot are two of my yeah. favorite film designs. Those things are yeah, so cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, ABC uh, Robot, um, that's Hammerstein from ABC Warriors. Mm -hmm. And that's, I mean, Bisley's uh, ABC Warriors that he did. Pat Mills, again, the guy who wrote Slain that I did, he wrote ABC Warriors. And that's some of the most beautiful ink work you'll ever see. Bisley's ABC Warriors. It's absolutely amazing. So that that's where that robot came from. It wasn't just from Chris. And, and then also Kev Walker had done a lot of work on it. So look, yeah, you see that's Bisley's. There's, um, there's the robot, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's just then, amazing. Uh, judge, what was that, 95, I think? That yeah, movie? 94, maybe, yeah. Uh, 1995. Uh, robot. I love this thing. It it's practical and it looks absolutely amazing in every shot. Right, let's see it. Yeah, just pity they didn't have a walking. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it just didn't go very far. Uh, another one of our students, Sylvia, asked if uh, how much of your uh, designs you've worked on in movies were the result of a collaboration with another artist. Is there is there a character or design in a movie that you've done that were ended oh, up being the result? Well, of the most obvious one is is um, Shaq T because. Um, Ian had done the original drawing of Shakti for episode one. And then when I was down in Australia, Trisha said, can you make that a creature? Because otherwise I don't have time to make that a costume. So I don't know what Ian intended, but that's why I did that drawing of Shakti um, where, you know, I have the, the, the dye running down her face. That one there. Yeah. This one, yeah. Oh yeah. That was in the yeah, yeah. 
so, beautiful. So the so that's definitely Ian, and I guess I added some nudity and some ink. I love the idea <laughs> of the the um just the it, the makeup being. I've used I use that in Pinocchio as well. It's like doing it. It kind of relates to how I like to draw as well, which is she's putting all the effort to put the makeup here, and then the bit that just let it run down the body. I just I love that idea that that the. I, you know, I'm not explaining myself very well. Um, there's an amazing uh, watercolor artist. I can't remember his name. Just massive big watercolors. Let's all the watercolor pour down the page, and it becomes a kind of it, it, part of the art, even though it looks like it's. Um, but it's anyway, that, how that gravity can create that sense of movement in your work. Uh, yeah, just it and it on. it just locks it, and it's it it looks accidental i mean that is obviously it's digital so it wasn't mm -hmm. um it was very deliberately done but um yeah mm -hmm. uh i've i've done that a couple of times as for um other collaborations um will you end up collaborating because people follow you in the in the film industry um and so when i did buckbeak for harry potter um, I worked with some great sculptors like Kate Hill, who's an amazing sculptor. So what you hope for is that the people who follow um, what you do get what you do. And I think very often there's a kind of push towards some artists. Um, you know, you you end up like when I when Rob when Rob would do, say, Dobby, he left nothing to chance. He did the really, really tight drawings right down to the scars and, and skin damage and everything. Um, or is, I, I, I don't have the patience for that, for one. Um, and also, I just tend to hope the person who comes after me will bring out the best of what you've done. And the best people do. And it's, it's fantastic. So in that way, film is always collaborative. And that there's very little ends up on, this, on the screen that is exactly like what you did. Right. Well, I, I want to make sure we have time to dig into Wednesday because it's so popular right now. And I'm sure you've got tons of great stories, especially as it relates to Mr. Burton. But I did want to dive in real quick before um, we get too far into just your tools, if you don't mind, just briefly mm -hmm. in terms of particularly um, your use of 3D. Um, and I know Vinny had some specific questions in relation to uh, tool sets and, 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 and processes. Uh, if you want to jump in, yeah. Vinny. Yeah, sure. So obviously, like your with your work, you have experience doing 3D stuff and 2D stuff. Oops. Um, and I wanted to know more about uh, at what stage you decide to use 3D or 2D. Is it a a pipeline related type of problem? No, or is it a... no not at all. It's it is a couple of things. I get bored easily, so I I embrace digital. Um, because I just wanted to see what it could do. So oh wow, I can do these things, and then. But the main reason I went into it, I was kind of putting it off. In fact, because I could draw and I've been trained to draw, I, I, I didn't need it. And, and if you ever asked um, production designers and directors, they'd be like, no, no, don't, they don't, they, 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 they don't do that. There's other people who can do that. But um, the thing that made me decide was I was working on Jack the Giant Killer. And uh, what's his face? Um, Brian Singer, who really didn't want to do the movie. And at least he didn't seem very enthusiastic and we um jack uh, a friend of mine howard swindell who's an amazing creature designer rob and myself were designing the giants rob bliss and after three months of not getting any reaction from him he was pushed like can you just tell us what your favorite of all these giant designs that we've done can you tell us and he put he picked 11 howards one of rob's and none of mine Right. So I was like, oh. so all of mine were drawn in that Star Wars style, in this style, except for that one. Except for that one. <laughs> so that's more me going, like... all right, I'll just go do a 3D sculpt yeah. and I'll just go crazy. And so what it was is that if I'm on a movie, um, for, and like if you work for Tim Burton, he gets this. Yeah. He doesn't need it any more detailed or this. Now, to me, each one of these drawings is asking a different design question. A few design questions, like this one was, well, why would they wear armor if they're being attacked from below? So I was, because, you know, their enemies are people. So 
do they have different kind of armor? So I'm asking that question. I'm provoking that conversation. That's my point. Mm -hmm. That that's what I see a, a design a concept artist does. It's it's ninety right. percent of the time asking questions, showing the wrong answers, and then at some times you are giving the right answers and going more detailed. But ninety percent of your job is asking questions with with illustrations, and um, so what would happen is we'd have these meetings and I would just get ignored and I'd be standing now, not all directors, but some directors, they'd go straight to the fully rendered, tricked out, sweaty looking 3d stuff. Sweaty. Stuff. Said, okay. <laughs> well, you know, you, you know, there's one other problem. I mean, I hope I don't do it where, where everything is the same the skin as a certain silky sweatiness in the helmet and not the, just some are, it can start to go that way. Um, so, I thought, okay, I'm going to learn it. And so what I did was um, I started to learn ZBrush, and, but I hardly ever do creatures in our characters with 3D. I, just, I don't really need to. But when I started to learn uh, for sets, because the same thing would happen, you'd go, you do sets and then the people who do the finished stuff. But, but then when I start doing, learning 3D and learning Modo and learning rendering, it's just an amazing tool. It's just too good. It's, you feel like Vermeer, you know, you're like, I can just do these incredibly, you know, like. Was it mostly on this project, Fantastic Beasts, where you started really leveraging 3D? I did because, um, mainly because, uh, what was I doing before that? But because Stuart Craig gave me the inside of Newt's case to design. He just like, it was a rare time in my life where it was like, I consulted Stuart, but he was like, um, it, it, he left me free to do an awful lot of it myself. So then that goes back to the pipeline thing you were asking about, which is, okay, now I can feed a pipeline with the 3D if I need to. Um, I mean, I'm not going to make an effort to make clean geometry. I have better things to be doing in my life, but totally. at least it, it'll be, I'll feed the shapes in. Um, but it's too, it's too useful. So like with this, like, oh, Sorry. and that's the other point is that oh. with Newt's shed, um, like previous... Yeah, the previous one. Okay. So this is Stuart's design. It's not my design. Like I put in a I so what have I got left with? Stuart Craig did a beautiful drawing, pencil drawing. And then it's like, can you do some visuals of it? Yeah, I'm gonna do bring it into 3D and build a 3D model and fill it up. And then it's all about lighting Stuart's design. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not adding value by doing a quick totally. drawing. He's already done it. He's already ever, done a beautiful drawing. This is, so, this is kind of a, sorry, Dermot, this is kind of like a spinoff question of that, but have you ever experienced in a production where you'll have the same design, one that's done in 3D and one that's done drawing, and the director, based on their tastes, likes one option just purely on execution? Because that's been... Oh yeah, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah, that's totally been my experience. I've done designs in the past where it's literally the same design, it one in a line drawing form, oh. in a rendered form, and it gets approved just purely on the rendering side oh, of things. I, I've also the reverse of that. Whereas yeah. when I was working with Doug Chang, wow. the Mechas would always take the most photographic, cool looking stuff. And I would take some of the designs and I would just draw it back in line and go, is, do you, is that what you want? Because that's what you have. It, it, you know what I mean? It's, it looks yeah. real, yeah. but it's not a good design. I think a good design will survive all the various ways of, of drawing it. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, I mean this that was on Christmas Carol, I think. Yes, yeah, Christmas Carol. Carol. But yeah. but but if if you look at like my favorite drawing is the Fezziwigs dancing, you know, because it's fun. all um Where did it? this one up there. Like okay. so so <laughs> when I was working for Rick Heinrichs um on Dark Shadows and then on Dumbo, Rick's like, Well, why do you want to do 3D when you can do that? And I'm like, because you don't need me to do that on this show. I don't ever get I don't get to do that I love working like that but I don't get to do that and and um you know you would put that up on the wall and Zemeckis wouldn't even notice it yeah okay, okay. so it can be so frustrating yeah um but but I love using 3d I, I mean I, right now I'm working on Tim's next project which is top secret and I can't talk about it but everybody knows what it is and I'm doing I I will quickly draw and sketch and present that to Tim and then I'll turn left and I'll do a tricked out 
um, 3D uh, model as well. It's it's it to me it's um, you're asking different questions. So I, I don't mean you guys. I mean the 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 tools we use are asking questions in different ways. Put it that way. So for example, I'm fantastic piece. I I did. I really wanted the idea of Newt's Navigator. Um, uh, so I animated it. That one, yeah. So at, at the bottom of the page is an animation. Yep. Um, yeah, that one. So because I, because to me it was all about the animation. So I was like, oh, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna learn how to, you know, very basic crude animation. But it, it sold the. Um, so the design, and then I did VR, you know, anything, anything to sell the design, I, I will do. But also because it's just, I just get bored. I just want to try things out. I just, I quite enjoy it. It's it's um, fun. Totally. Yeah. Is there any other tools questions you had, Vinny, specifically? <clears throat> no, that was a big one because I, I feel like, especially now, a lot of uh, kids starting off are getting really heavy into 3D. But I think one thing that they said, to, oftentimes I see in portfolios that get neglected design part you get too caught up in like fancy rendering so it's, it's cool to hear about your process yeah. philosophy but but, well. but you know what will happen when you see a good design yeah you you just don't you don't care you're like oh that's yeah, cool exactly you <laughs> yeah that, i know yeah. i because when i was at lightbox it's some amazing portfolios i used to go to comic conventions and yeah you'd be like oh you're doing too much cross hatching and uh and now it's like why are you asking my advice? This stuff is amazing. But to <laughs> me, it's about design. It's a, like, for example, this one we're looking at. I, I, I mean, again, you're working with directors that just... Uh, my idea was that Newt would be able to control the, the... In his case, where he keeps the animals, that he would be able to control the night and day by just moving the sun around and the moon around. Like, so he'll take that one and move it over there. So it's this artificial little sun that he's lighting up the environments for the creatures to put them to sleep, wake them up. And what was wonderful about working for Stuart Craig is it was a really particular thing we were going for because when I showed JK Rowling the navigator and the animation, she's, her comment was, he's not that good a wizard. He wouldn't have that, right? And I remember, so this one is where he puts, uses the moon to put them to sleep. Um, and if you notice, I've just done a little quarter moon. So it just it stops and then it just closes, I think. I better do it now. Yeah, look, it, it just is. closed. Mm -hmm. So what we were going for was he's not that good a magician. And he really just wants to care for his animals. So he'll use magic to a point and then he'll do the rest a little bit ham-fistedly. The best he can sort of thing so we we're kind of going okay what's that so we were looking at um like the new york uh, natural history museum and the amazing panoramas and we're like okay well it can't be that because that's too good and we can't we don't want people to go oh it's a panorama from the museum we want it to be um we wanted to have it a bit rough on the edges and not perfect and theatrical and arch and that you could have those conversations with Stuart craig and it's just the best the job can get and then you you work with directors <laughs> who don't necessarily get what you're <laughs> they're saying and then they shoot it if you see if you see it it's all close up can't see any of it okay if they could get rid of the actors it'd be great because you could just see our designs true designer uh yeah so there's a rare time where they actually built what i did it's cool gonna be exciting yeah um, yeah no, it's great and I think when I came into the film industry, I thought this is what it'll be. I'll design yeah. things and they'll build it. And you're like, no, it never happens. Almost never. <laughs> so one of my big questions today what pertains to uh, all this discussion about not only style, but also tools. Um, you know, I had a, a slide prepared that had uh, your work from Jack the, the Giant Slayer, as well as some of, you know, your Kylo Ren designs that you talked about uh, uh, on social media posting that, uh, you know, JJ was baffled by uh, whatever. And my question is, you know, what's your approach to working when, and you've already kind of answered that saying that you, you, your ego's out of the equation. You put the onus on you. You, you said you have to design yourself to fit the project, which. Yeah. Or at least be aware of it. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Um, mm. I guess. And I was kind of like, you know, kind of front loading my, my question of like, you know, do you, 
I, I might have asked it somewhere else too, but you know, do you see you know trends, you know, people focusing on rendering as in polish as opposed to good design? Do you do you see those trends ebbing and flowing? Do you see like it felt for a while there, like in the mid last last decade, it was all the concept art was focused on realistic rendering and design, uh, realistic rendering, it's, and now I feel like. Is. It is, it is, but I feel like there's some powerhouses coming through like Brian Matias and Caleb Alexander Watts and some other designers that are still yeah. more shape based that aren't so focused on the high end render that are getting still the high level jobs and succeeding very well with designs that are permeating yeah. through. Um, so I guess my question to you is, you know, uh, uh, do you see a detriment to people over focusing on, you know, the high end render kind of aspect of things? And I, th I, I think, um, First of all, Brian, yeah, Brian, I've known for, since he came into Ice Blink in 2006 or something. And yeah, his style is fantastic. And it, but it's, it, he's doing characters for Star Wars. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's, 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 it's almost, it's such a, it's such a niche, niche, if you can say something for Star Wars is a niche. But you know what I mean? It's, it's, um, I tend to work much more broadly on mm -hmm. lots of different things um uh okay so what i resist is saying um sort of being you know old fucker to, talking about people <laughs> better learn to draw because they don't need to I they see. should i think it'd be make you a way better designer but i th i think you can get um you know not we, we'll be derailed if we start talking about ai but i seem to be the only person in the in the industry that doesn't give a damn about it i don't care um okay. partly because and i've said this forever or at least for the last few months um kit bash blender 16 year old with a computer they got for christmas can get 80 percent well 50% as far as a lot of people in the industry. Sure. Just because those tools are available. So um, design then becomes about your ability to explore the story of the thing you're designing and the, your ability to have that conversation. And right. if the conversation is, look at this amazing visual, it's not enough, but it can get you quite far. Right. And a lot of, and a lot of, you know, um, some of the kids, not kids, but people I was looking at portfolios, I was looking at logbox, just amazing stuff. You know, you have this feeling you need to go learn to draw young man, young woman. Right. Like, right. Yeah. They don't need to, I don't, don't right. lie to people. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I don't like people in my position describing the fiery hoops they jump through to get to where they are. And, you know, you have, um, to me, I love doing what I do. I loved drawing. That's that's the bottom line. Do you, do you love doing it? That's that not you know that that's it. Do you love doing it? I, I mean, I'm sure there's some, you know, if you don't love drawing and creating visuals, it's, it must be really boring. I, I can't imagine why would somebody would want a career doing it if they didn't love doing it. Um, and then the other thing that happens is um, you'd be surprised how quickly people <laughs> learn. They come in, and you're like, oh. And then a year later, God, they got really, really good. Um, so, so that's happening. I mean, that is happening in comics all the time. You'd meet some kid with a portfolio, like, um, and a year later, they'd be quite incredible. But I don't know. I, I, my, I. So, if you learn to draw and get an understanding of how to draw and shapes and all that, you will be a better designer of whatever you do, car design, whatever you do you're going to be better. And then of course, people can jump the queue by learning the software, but, um, but okay. So what, I mean, sure. there's, yeah. there's, then they'll get, they get caught out or they won't because they'll get good enough not to be caught out. And <laughs> the, the, the other thing is the job is different. Um, I hear a lot of people uh, talking about, well, it's very important that the producers and the directors know it's not just about our drawing abilities. It's about our ideas as well. No, it's not. Sometimes, sometime, like in my position, I want it to be about my ideas as well as drawing. However, I've just come off. I spent two years on Whirlwind, which was Masters of the Air, which is the next Band of Brothers thing. It's all historical. 
There's no, they don't want my, any, I, I don't want to give them, and I, they don't need my ideas. I, I'm not going to redesign a B17. Sure. So to my job on that with, and I, I stayed with it because I worked for Chris Seegers and I really like him as a production designer. And he took me on to Blade Runner. And that was completely the opposite. Um, that was like, knock yourself out, do your thing. And that was um, just an absolute joy. But what I'm saying is, there's different jobs. There's different ways of being a concept artist. And one version is, can you take this art department model or this costume designer's drawing and can you make it look good for the producers and for the different people who need to know what this is going to finally look like and we don't need your ideas? That's a perfectly good job. You know, lots of people do that. And um, it's just that for me, if I lay out all my work in my career, my best work is when I've is when I've been given a, a bit of a given authorship. For me, doesn't mean that everybody knows what to do with that. Even you know, not everybody's a designer. A lot of people are amazing illustrators. They're they're not good designers, though, necessarily. I mean, they could be, but it's a different job. And we need both. But I think that's where it'll go. I think people it, it will it'll divide. You know, you either can have the conversation about design or you can't that's how you'll get caught out but then there's work for people who don't have that conversation that's what i guess what i mean i don't know if you guys agree with that or i totally you... agree with that yep it's yeah 100 percent. yeah, 100%. Um, yeah. Oh, go ahead you also mentioned ai and we were planning on mentioning ai students in the comments have been asking about ai actually um it is something that is a very prevalent aspect to our uh, field right now um, yeah. And you mentioned uh, uh, having already thoughts on it. Yeah, I'm not threatened by it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, I because, mean, because, you know. Yeah. I, I get right. in trouble for saying that. <laughs> no, <laughs> but I, I don't like, think everyone's saying, like, I'm not sure if you guys noticed that lately everyone is posting portraits of AI and they all look the same. Right. Right. Yeah. It, it, it looks exactly the same with a different filter. It's like a filter. At one point, uh, it's the same. I'm, I'm, I don't think it's threatening at all. I, on, on the contrary, I think it's going to uh, push and make the designers much more important because they're going to realize that AI is doing everything the same. You look at them and you get tired of watching it. Yeah, or, 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 if, or it won't, and then it'll be a tool, and then I'm going to start using it. I'm, I, I get bored and I'll try it. But so far, I'm not inclined to. And then yeah. and I see like when, um, uh, oh, what's his name? Um, oh, Russian art. Rybovich, Andrei Rybovich uses it. It's beautiful because he's an amazing artist That's and he right. knows what to do with right. it. Right. And Chris Chris pointed out very early on that the best results from AI generated art were coming from the best artists. <laughs> well, he knows, yeah. they, they know how to, they use it as a tool and not right. yeah. as a shortcut. Yeah. It's a tool, and and like the, I went to the town hall meeting where they discovered that the concept art association, which I'm on the board, had, and um, it was fascinating because they had two or three uh, uh, copyright lawyers, and to hear their take on it was fascinating, really interesting because that's real information, and like because what tends to happen, everybody's like, oh, the sky's falling in, okay, what are you going to do about it? Oh, the sky's falling in. But that's not going to stop it. First of all, I don't think it's falling in it. But if you think it is, what are you going to do about it? There's a lot of catastrophizing. And I really think, I, I said again, some kid with Blender's free, guys. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's a free piece of software. There's no barrier to entry. And people are doing amazing things with that. And there's tutorials on YouTube for free. Um there's people coming like um, Daryl Warner's uh, son, Dar concept artist Daryl, who I know very well, his son Kip just did this piece of animation in Blender. It's just unbelievable. And he's seven, I think he might be 19 now. Really amazing. But but he's he's takes after his dad. He's a really good artist. He's got a really good eye. But he was doing a level of production and animation with this free tool in his spare time as a school kid that looked like 10 people did it that's not ai that's just somebody working with the free tools you know i, I don't know i i 
I, I've said it before, maybe in two years' time. Like somebody said, well, what if they're taking, putting in derma power? I'm like, I'd love to see it. I've ripped <laughs> off loads of people at the beginning of my career. <laughs> Rip but, but maybe off. in two years, I'll be, out of, I'll be out of work and I'll be really, I'll change my mind. But so far, I'm, I'm, I just, I'm not that bothered. We had a previous guest speaker, Tim Flattery, and he had been in the industry forever. And so he talked about when Photoshop showed up, everyone said the sky yeah. is falling. And then 3D showed up and everyone said the sky is falling. Yeah. And here it is again, AI. And then he, he's also saying, I'm using it. I'm using it right now on a project because why not? Yeah, yeah, why not? And if, one of the things the lawyer said on the town meeting, which was brilliant, is he said, um, and it was a very clever thing to inject. I thought it was very subtle. He said, um, because the conversation was about copyright. And in, in the US and all over the world, only in England, in the United Kingdom, it, there's a 15 year copyright for machine created art. Anywhere else in the world, no copyright for machine created art. And he said, uh, I think it was at the end of the 19th century when the camera was uh, invented, somebody took a photograph of Oscar Wilde and people started took the photograph and they started selling prints. And then the guy who took the photograph sued them and they went to court and the people said, no, you didn't do that. A machine did it. And then the judge at the time said, no, there's enough uh, authorship in how the person using the camera has set up the shot, composed it or whatever, that we deem it to be an artistic endeavor. Okay. And that's a hundred. The point I think this copyright lawyer was very subtly making was same old, same old. This is a tool that came. Can you imagine being a portrait painter when the camera came along? Oh my! I mean, you'd just think that's the end. Right. But people leave, leave out the fact that Vermeer was using a camera obscura, like two, a couple hundred years before that, and people are like, "Oh, how does he do this? How does he do this?" He's a he's a, a magician, but yeah, he's using the camera obscura, a little bit of technology. They've always used technology. And the thing about Vermeer is it doesn't matter because what he does is stunning. It's, it's his ability to compose, use light, you know, uh, you know, so same when on Andrei Rybovich uses AI. It's oh wow, okay, that's that's beautiful. Because he knows how to use the tool. So um, but yeah. Well, there we go. We we don't have to 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 fire up the pitchforks just yet for AI folks. <laughs> um, there's there's another student to calm down. <laughs> there's another student um uh, had a question that I actually really want to know the answer to. Josephine asked if there's any style of clothes from any particular cultural or historical background that you personally like to draw inspiration from, and a few questions about inspiration where you get it from. But that's a that's a pretty fun question about is there a spot in particular? Um, when when we were on Star Wars, we got out the Tashin books, myself and Ian, and Ian McKay got this thing. I don't know. I've said it a few times, but piece of paper, Tashin book about African um, you know, tribes, like here's one of the North African tribes, here's another one, whatever. And I go, okay, you've got seven seconds, seven seconds each drawing. So you turn the page and you just get your pen. And Ian can do a pretty good drawing in seven seconds. Page, turn the page. It's brilliant. I, I, I still use shapes that I collected in that one hour session with Ian 20 something years ago. Wow. Um, to the, to, it's I, I tend to not totally Ian is always like here's a something I found in my house I'm going to turn it upside down and do this and draw I've never been able to do that I don't I don't find household goods turned sideways insp inspiring I just can't do it but um, to me it's about story it's not really like you'll see things that are inspiring um, but um, I can remember, you know, I saw a photograph of a crab and these turquoise colors going into these pinks. I was like, God, oh, that's the most, that is stunning. That's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. It's not, it's not a cultural thing. It's just, it's just a colorful, it's just um, spotting a, a, a particular color. Um, yeah, I would, yeah, I just, I'll, I'll just look for, I don't know, indigenous or tribal or whatever, anything sure. to, to inspire. But I don't think, um, you know, obviously when I did Slain and because of my Irish heritage and I would look at um, Celtic yeah. stuff for that and some of that is really, really beautiful, like the Sutton who um, hoard and stuff like that. I don't know. Um, you just show some of that work. We've mentioned it a few times and I'd, I'd be remiss to not show some of it because 
Oh, the slain stuff, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, but that pay, uh, yeah, that actually that. <laughs> Sorry, this one. No, I was just going to say that. Yeah, that, <laughs> these, um, you know, I, I, okay, so I love, absolutely love drawing comics, and probably I had the opportunity to go back and do it again, but you know, it's very difficult to make a good living from it. Mm -hmm. Um, but what I did, like, for example, the new film I'm on, I spent four days last week. I just sat and got a storyboard. I just drew the film because um, <clears throat> I've got terrible memory. I mean, I, I can read a script in the morning and then be in a meeting and people are talking about things. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. I, <laughs> like major, major events in the script. And I'm like, yeah, I've forgotten. Just a terrible memory. So what I tend to do now um, is I sit there with a notebook and actually i've got one here uh, i'll tend to just this isn't last week's one which is top secret i was gonna say i was gonna um, freeze frame it for everyone <laughs> but look like this is for um can you see that this yeah. is for yeah. uh, ma uh, masters of the air just fill up a notebook like this mm -hmm. with um That's you know awesome. really just really really quick just to just get the script into my head just just to get it into my head and um but ha what happened, to, I did that for Dumbo and um, Rick Heinrichs was like, some here. yeah, yeah. So I did that for Dumbo and um, Rick was like, oh, can I have that? I was like, oh, okay, but it's kind of done for me. As in, if I think I have an audience, I'll, I'll, I'll draw differently. Um, because no, no, let me have it because it'll be really good. I, I won't show it to anybody. But he did, he, he printed them. I let I photocopied and sent it to them. And then the next meeting for Tim, he's took them all off on the wall of the art department. <laughs> I was like, because yeah, they're cool. <laughs> I was like, well, come on. I mean, it was flattering, but they, there's something about, it's it's a bit like going back to Ian saying, you've got seven seconds to draw that. There's something, because the other thing I do, by the way, is I only use a pen and I, I don't pre-draw anything. Because, um, as in, I don't put in pencils and rub them out. And... Um, what I do instead, actually, is I use. Um, I don't. I, I and I don't use Tipex. I tried that for a while, but now what I do is I use. You see that? Yeah. Sticky label, st little white labels. So, mm -hmm. if I want to rub something out, instead of I just put a big white stick, sticker on it and draw it again. Um, <laughs> a patch up. Yeah, it's a really, really good way of. Um, yeah, like on this one here, what you can't see is that there's loads of little white stickers down covering bits up. Awesome. Anyway, it's it's just a really good. What was this question? Sorry, I lost. Well, it, it it pertains to uh, a lot of students were asking like, what if you get stuck? What if you run out of something? What if you have any insecurities? You're kind of answering all that right now. Sometimes your memory isn't so good with the script, so you. It sounds like you embrace it by drawing. You fall back on your skills and you draw yeah. it out. Yeah, I only remember things visually i think mm -hmm. i think you know what i mean if they which is i think it makes you um one of the things that will m m make me probably okay good at being a concept artist is that i i need things to be clear to remember them so i tend to it kind of reminds you know why the joke i love the joker that film and i think one of the reasons that was such a good film is because the director was a comedy director and he's mm -hmm. used to timing and timing. And that's so beautifully timed, that film. It's so beautifully edited in the storytelling. So the same thing that maybe, I don't know, coming from comics or just needing things to be clear in my head. I, I, I tend to go, okay, what's the story here? I need it to be clear, which, um, um, you know, leads to doing clear designs, oh. I think. Well, yeah, and you're not, obviously, with your style and your approach, you don't get bogged down in the tiny little stuff and your big giant stickers you're putting in your sketchbook uh, attest to that. That's It's it's a through line through everything. It's not like it's your approach to yeah. all this stuff, uh, which I think helps keep it fresh. Um, yeah, don't protect, don't protect what you've done. I mean, I, I remember when I went over to Ice Blink first in 2008. I, now, when I'm doing environments, I tend to have millions of Photoshop layers because you're dealing with light and... Which, oh, he, am I gone? Am I still here? No, no, you, no you're still there. No, I, my screen blurred. Um, so, I should go there, but when I'm drawing characters, I'll keep flattening the picture down, flatten it down, flatten it down, flatten it down, to take your choices away, just to go forward, 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 and and don't okay. protect 
don't keep thinking the lines you put down are so precious. You can just throw them out, put them in again. It doesn't matter. Not a lot of ego in your approach, it seems like. Oh, no, I have a huge ego. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just think, I just am confident that, ah, I'll do it again. You know, I just. Sure. Yeah. 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 Um, a lot of uh, students asking questions about Wednesday and your experience working on Wednesday and, and you know, uh, uh, how that went and how, how you enjoyed it. Um, it. Well, okay. So first of all, I wasn't on it for very long. Mm. I did a lot of work, but what happened is I was on another film and I was on Whirlwind um, with um, Chris Seegers and Tim called. And then I was like, okay, Chris, how long do you need me for? Cause Tim's called. And he's like, oh, no, no, no. I need you till next year to go into the VF. I was like, oh. So, okay. I'll split my time three days for one, three days for the other for a while. And um, I said to Tim, uh, now Mark Scruton was the production designer and he did a, an amazing job. And I happen to be working with Mark on Tim's next one right now. But I said to Mark on Wednesday, I don't want to work for the art department. I just, just, I don't have time. I'm on another project. My best, I'm most valuable to Tim helping him think it doesn't matter if what I do ends up on screen or not I don't it doesn't matter it's a bonus if it does but that's not what it's about it's do you want a monster running through the woods is it a big monster you know it's it, it's not about the detail um so and then I talked to Tim he's like yeah 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 just just send the stuff to me send stuff to me and the joy of working for Tim Burton is he loves that stuff he loves the style that doesn't commit him to too much. Okay. He's the exact opposite to a lot of directors who will go, Oh, I don't understand it. It's a drawing. I don't get it. Can you, mm -hmm. I, I think there, there can often be a push towards photo real because directors use it, the fact that you've drawn something as an excuse not to commit to something. So they're like, Oh, can you, uh, can we have it in color? Can we have it in? And then everything gets just, <clears throat> um ends up getting pushed that way um tim with tim it's the opposite he doesn't if you show him a very finished thing he feels you're making decisions too early and he doesn't even want to think about that yet um and i think the other thing about me is is my goth childhood comes <laughs> through <laughs> so it's just so um it's an easy one from you know it just comes natural for me to draw things that tim might like but i don't draw on his style at all so it's it's but, it's not so finished to commit him to things and it's not it's in the stuff he likes but it's not i'm not trying to ape anything that he's done doing you, it seems you know like what the mean? style not... is similar but but you guys are both our style is not similar but you guys both have the same level of like efficiency with the work where there's enough it's not uh like jeremy was saying over rendered like his work is like the sketches i've seen that he would provide are like very impressionistic and rough and not at all practical uh, like plus, really plus he, mark was just telling me actually maybe i shouldn't be talking about this it's mark's business to talk about it but mark's screwing but he's like tim will come in <laughs> he and he'll empty him. take things out of the set mm. he doesn't want um, clutter clutter and here's a really important thing that people again you guys understand but a lot of people don't the difference between patina and design and pattern mm -hmm. you you've, you've got your big shapes and you can have lots of noise as long as they don't interfere with the big shape so what's your main theme so same with illustrations same with writing same with everything and i think tim's and i i'm the same it's like what's the main thing i'm trying to put across here and then I'll throw in some texture and, and as long as it doesn't interfere with it. Um, but um, so, yeah, so I, I did them, but I, w it was, I was working from here and then they'd gone out to, it often happens with Tim that he gets busy with doing what he's doing and I don't talk to him for months. And so, in fact, often I won't talk to him until the next time he calls me for a project. I'll just send the stuff in. And, um, you know, sometimes it lands like when I saw the trailer for Wednesday, I saw the boats. And I was like, oh, that's actually, they've used my exact designs on the side of the boat, but I didn't know they were going to do that. It's just. Um, boats um, here, I think on your, you, you had posted a few of the boats uh, just yeah, recently. I put them up today, actually, because yeah. I was kind of saying. Yeah, so that's mm -hmm. an example where 
you know, strapping all the teddy bears to the front of the boat. I just thought that's a, you know, I'd throw that in. You, you don't need to, that doesn't need to be de- detailed to, the, the point's made. You don't need to yeah. make any detail. And then you did some those, traditional um, stuff too, which is really cool for the the creature. Yeah, because what happened is there's a character in in Xavier who, um, he has a hut out in the woods where he paint and he's going. He's trying to um, he does does all these paintings of the monster. So I got a call. Tim can, uh, was wondering, can you do some paintings in different styles of just imagine somebody painting in a shed. So um, I did that, but then when I saw it on Wednesday, it's funny because that particular one, you can see it, it's in, in the shed. And then the, there's a, Mark got another artist out in um, uh, Romania to, um, Romania or Bulgaria? Romania, in, to, to um, do the paintings, but some of them look like this because we weren't sure what the creature was going to look like at this point. So they've been painted over, I think. But it's just a chance to do a style that's completely not what I would normally do. And in, in my studio, I have another studio in the attic, by the way, for because this has got so packed. <laughs> just doing more traditional paintings. Okay. Uh, several well, questions popping up, and one that I had myself was how how important is working within a particular style to you on a project? Like a style often an issue. I mean, you've gone from animation to live action, you know, uh, everything in between. And so as you're as you're pivoting between those different projects, is is style an issue? I, I think you slides. gravitate to your own style. You can't help it. Yeah. Especially when time's no, a factor. There's no time to stop and think, what style am I going to use to approach this with? You just got to go. No. And I, and when I've tried to, um, oh, I'm going to do it in this style. It just it doesn't last. I mean, I, I think I'm, like, even in my um, 3D work, I'm still using uh, light and color in a, in a, you know, obviously in 3D work. Now I'm thinking about how, light interacts more than anything than shapes so much but there's still you're still like even that one with nude shed it's still he's a silhouette in front of light um it's it's all story i don't i um I, I just end up doing what i do i don't make a decision about it i don't think with tim i just start drawing i mean that's mm-hmm. that's why i love working for him because i'm just like start drawing and it's whatever comes out um so so, so you're saying with tim you're doing a lot of these quick impressionistic kind of a story moment sketch just to get the the wheels turning i think for him yeah. anything to inspire him but then with something like this file you sent this is much more of like a practical like a set driven um oh yeah no piece, i want right? i wanted to show you that because it was just um is was that the huge photoshop one yeah yeah so i can click oh, yeah, through but, but i is there i showed the three finished yeah, yeah i, I just I, I think it's in here the, the these three here right yeah so it was just like i was just saying that's Okay, the reason I wanted to show that was because that is so unsuitable. And then, okay, but that's what they shot with. And, yeah. and that's what I did to it. Like mm. Tim was like, oh, <laughs> we might have to use this. Can you do something? I'm like, oh, well, you can just put the Tim Burton roofs on and you're off. <laughs> you know, and, and, and right. just change the lighting. And it was more because it's not typical of what I do. That mm. This particular one, it's more, it's more of saying, you know, I do this as well if, if, I, if they need me to. Uh, I can but, do it, but but I thought it was fun that it was you know if you look through the 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 layer structure here it's yeah. it's actually not like you're not going crazy with anything other than just utilizing what's there like you could have easily gone in there and painted every single shingle oh god or no single, I, I but or, but you're you're a yeah. lot lot of photo bashing people would like pure efficiency but, yeah. like just to get it done um, and it yeah, works yeah, great yeah, yeah. Um, no I couldn't I couldn't do that I remember um yeah I, I yeah I sent that because I thought maybe it might be useful for somebody to go okay what, what's he do with how does he do this yeah it's no it's great just to see the the walkthrough of it because it's uh it's it it, it it looks like you were very efficient when working on it, it was it was kind of quick and dirty yeah you but but what i do notice is that um i've don't i've never learned a process for that like i often see in vfx reels and stuff and you see vfx houses and they go through a process it's probably the same mm-hmm. you just it looks like wow they've got a very deliberate and definite process i'm just like oh wait, will this work yeah i think that'll work you know i'm just trying things <laughs> and just very quickly boom 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 okay. and again what what's the goal here i mean i need to make this thing that i need to convince tim it's okay he'll be able to use this it'll 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 work so a that's what this was for he's, he's oh go ahead sorry no i just kind of 
Sorry, that, look at us. Look at us. Uh, a lot of what you said has been about reacting. You're you're constantly, you, you don't, a lot of people will sit down with, I have this design in mind and this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to sit down to do this thing from beginning to end, but you're often reacting to what's happening on the page, on the screen. And that's great. Yeah. 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 I tell you why, because that, the other thing is that Alice in Wonderland painting that I put in uh, from the 1990s. Mm -hmm. um, uh, is it there? This one here. Yeah, that one. So um, I did that at the very beginning of my career for video game cover. And I have a version of that in my head that's different, that's bluer, mm -hmm. it's still in there. And when I painted that, I was disappointed. I was like, that's not what was in my head. And I thought, well, don't do that then. Don't put mm -hmm. something in your head. Just let, the, I mean, put the information about what the design needs to be into your head, but don't put the picture into your head because it just, it, you'll be disappointed. Because mm -hmm. you, you, you're already having trouble overcoming what the director has in their head that's one of the biggest problems concept or any designer has which is it's not what i was thinking it doesn't matter whether it's good oh and one cool thing about trick for that is animate it and get a projector in your studio and blow it up on the wall it's and there. then let it play yeah. and i did that a couple of times on um and then they come in for a meeting and they'd be standing around and uh talking to Rob after they talk to me and they're looking at it and then they just start to buy the design. They get used to it. It's, it's, uh, it's something. Um, uh, I think I've said it before. You feel like going, can you just take the design away with you for a few days and, and learn to love it as opposed to just reacting? Cause that often you often get designs don't go through because they don't match what was already in, in the person's head. So, yeah. I'm going to kind of follow up with, I think, one of the biggest questions that we uh, have in the chat, and it's a common one at an art school, would be, you know, uh, portfolio, what do you suggest, you know, breaking out. If I recall correctly, your story about getting working at Lucasfilm was that you just knew the post office box. So you I just, know anybody. I just oh, sent okay. it to this. Yeah. You just sent it. You just sent it. You knew what it was. just looked up what's the address and then having... <laughs> when i went yeah no it's so everybody i have a classroom full of students uh, with me right now everybody just uh find out the address and mail it in <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> just lucas valley road yeah and then when i was there it's like it's literally a, a post box and i was just lucky because ian had decided he was he didn't leave the but... biggest question again you know portfolio wise uh, a lot of students want to know you know what kind of things should you know in a portfolio what do you recommend so uh, the way to, i think to pair that question down would be what kind of things would you see in it? What, what kind of things would you love to see in a portfolio at when you're at Lightbox looking at portfolios? What kind of things would knock your socks off and make you go, wow, this person's okay, okay. so fun? Well, um, uh, okay. So one of the things I saw again and again and again was uh, very accomplished work. And I am, um, so they, and I think a lot of them are heading towards careers and games. And I get the impression that a lot of, people i don't know if people get um promoted in games very quickly but there seems to me they they require these young artists starting out to do here's the character from the front here's the side here's the turntables right so i was like for your own sanity do something else that is I, how could you you're not going to last long as an artist if you're drawing if you're doing that you may you're, it's impressive, but it's boring. And, and it's, it, so I talked to one girl, her stuff is beautiful. And she was saying that somebody else had said to her that her, the way she'd laid her paint, her illustrations in her portfolio across the page, she could have done a better job. And I was like, no, 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 just stop doing, do, do one picture on a page. So for me personally, I know games are different. But I want you to have the confidence that you go, that's my design. What you think? Not here's here's the design from all the different angles. I don't need to see it from the back. I've never done that ever. I leave somebody else do that. <laughs> you 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 meet somebody in the in the, in the street. You've never met them before. You, you don't go. Can you turn around, please? I want to see what you look <laughs> like from the back. You get you know what people are. You don't need to do that. I've and I think it's almost. It's so frustrating because it's, um, I don't know who tells them to do that. I, I, I don't, I know that you do need that later in the process. Okay, you've designed this character. Like you've designed this character, but does it work in the round? I, I'll, I'll figure that out later. 
No, I don't need to figure that out, out now. I'm going to do another character. I'll design another character and another thing. So it's not exactly a call for variation, but it's a call for um, more ideas than more illustrations. You know what I mean? So so here's your illustration that's asking and, and, and examining this question. And here's one that's examining this question. And... Here's what if you if it's like people doing incredibly detailed signatures. It's like, have you not got something else to do? <laughs> do another picture instead of doing incredibly detailed or or get a stamp and sure. stamp it. You know, I'm, they're beautiful. I, I'm all for that. <laughs> um, so other artists would give you, you know, my friend Daryl Warner does absolutely stunningly detailed pencil work. And I would look at I if except he's such a genius. If if he was a I would be like, how can you do that? Because that, that is so painstaking and you have to put so much time and effort. But I'm just not wired like that. So it may be me, it may, might be unfair of me to spot things in portfolios that I couldn't bear to do. Maybe they love doing that. But um it's the most common thing I was saying was oh just like don't you have anything else you do in your life than draw this character from five different angles well i think there's a lot of merit to that you know sometimes students will ask you know if a job says it requires three years experience do i need to apply i, I can't apply right and it's like you should because a, a great drawing a great painting can blow through all those doors yeah and exactly. you're, you're, you're stacking that in in the artist's favor by saying what you're saying uh, uh, some really great cool ideas but also demonstrating a lot of different problem solving as well, which is obviously a big part of the job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I don't particularly care that somebody knows how to design their character from all angles. So I don't care. You can figure that out later. If, like when I did um, Buckbeak for Harry Potter, much later in the process when the design was decided on, um, then I did different angles. But I, I very rarely do that. But but the main feel of what Buckbeak was, I didn't need... Um, you know, when I showed it to Alfonso Curon, he didn't need to see it from different angles. He was immediately able to tell me why why it was wrong. Without so so that's later in the that this is one of the rare times where VFX asked me to do detailed wing designs and you know all that. But I very rarely do that. Very rarely. In fact, that's one of the last times I've ever done it. Hmm. You know? So so this that drawing. And then a couple of the earlier ones. So, for example, if we go, if I don't know if they're on my website, but um, uh, I should bring. Yeah. So, if you look at the one in the right, so the one right in the middle. Which number? Uh, uh, Twenty-eight. Oh, one, two. Oh, hang on. Well, up one. Uh, oh, sorry, down one. Yeah. That one. <laughs> yeah. No, no. no that one. Next one. <laughs> but by the way, when, well, one? yeah. Well, that's one as well, but but actually, <laughs> which uh, which number was it? There's numbers right on in the middle, uh, the one I in the middle square. Well, <laughs> center, center square for five, Alex. That one, that one, the one you've got your cursor. I don't like that, that one. one. I was okay, so <laughs> yeah. so so this was quite far along into the design process, and when I showed that to to Alfonso, he didn't need to see that from all angles to tell me that's too noble. Buckbeak should be younger. I said it a million times. He said he should look like he farts and shits and pisses. Like he's an <laughs> adolescent. He's not a, he's not a, he said, you think Buckbeak is this creature that's going to come down and tell you noble truths about how the world works. He says not, he's a teenager. Don't need to see that from different angles to have that conversation. I'm just making this that's note, needs to know if it farts and okay, got yeah. it. My student, but I'm here <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, but he's, he's, he's <laughs> But but I was like okay, and and I I personally preferred that as a designer I prefer that design because he made me straighten the neck, take the eyebrows off, so he wasn't frowning. Um, um, yeah, the, the, I think at the very latest one twenty eight maybe yeah well that's yeah that's so the one up at the top left hand corner is the final design. Oh, left hand corner, this one. Yeah, so so he's got no, he's not frowning which every bird of prey you ever see has looks like they're frowning, which makes them look wise and noble. And it can be dumb as shit. You can just put feathers in his it. bangs, like emo bangs. I should have suggested that. But yeah. even that straight, I remember arguing, I was like, that straight neck, 
looks like he's put the head on mm-hmm. but that's what he wanted i couldn't i couldn't get away but anyway that's m- my wider point is um it's not gonna it doesn't need to be seen at different angles to have that conversation um so variation in portfolios um you can tell in ver- with very few drawings what people are able to do you don't need a lot you know um I don't know if that answers it enough, does it? It does. It does very well. Everyone's responding very enthusiastically in the chat. Never during a turnaround again. I'm just kidding. Uh, but... <laughs> yeah. I've been blamed. And they were, they were like... They were That's right. They were the power said. Yeah. Our, 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 anim- our t- traditional animation director is pulling his hair out right now, Nicholas. That's why, he's, that's well, why his yes, camera's not that's on. The, that's, later in the, that's later in the process. I'm talking about when you're, when you're designing a character. One, to be fair, I, the question I asked you specifically is what kind of things do you want to see more? Yeah, yeah. Of, what do you like to see and everything? Because that's a, I think it's a better way to ask the question as opposed to, you know, what yeah. no, there, there are parts there are parts of the process, like he was saying. At the beginning, yeah. you don't go to it. I remember um there was an, an, an anecdote that I was hearing when they were showing to Walt Disney a design, and this designer just showed up with one design. And he said, Well, it's great, but I, I would like to see more. Not in terms of the turnarounds of the design, but more uh, ideas, different variations of the mm-hmm. design. So that's what. What we call it, do we call it like that part blue sky? Because in, in, in animation, we call it blue sky that you, you get to do whatever you want. You start yeah. drawing, they give you like a little a little um, guidelines and you don't, you don't show up obviously with a turnaround because it's still, what, what is this? Well, you can, <laughs> the, the turnaround, yeah, but the, the turnaround seems to suggest that I think this is so definitely the design we should. I've, that's I've, right, that's right. I, we're not ready, we're not ready for that no. yet. Yeah. yeah. I don't. I don't know. Maybe it's just the particular people I was seeing at Lightbox, but yeah, I guess they all came from games, and like, and they need to. It's to... super popular in games to do that because you see the character actually mostly from the back than the front, oddly enough. Right. So when you're designing a character for games, you see more of their back than the front of them. That's that's right. Yeah, and I guess you'd never get away with just designing them from the back. Yeah, I mean, that was small look as exciting to see a bunch of yeah, yeah, yeah. someone's back in the portfolio. Yeah. <laughs> but still, to sell that game, they don't put the characters back on the cover of the game. Yeah. So. <laughs> they should. Yeah, no. Well, sure, I, we've been going here for a bit. I, I want to make sure we have time for maybe if you have time during like one or two more yeah, questions, no then we'll we'll start winding down just so you I know you probably want to go to bed at some point tonight. Um, <laughs> I did want to ask real quick about in terms of the way you approach cinematic composition, is there any filmmakers that you pull from or is there anything that that you're when you're doing like these keyframes or or you know like your 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 key moments? Is, is there any particular filmmakers or or um, cinematographers that you're a big fan of uh, or um, films that you go back to that you pull from for them? Um I think it just goes in by osmosis. I, okay. I've never been kind of, you know, I worked with like Brian Floor, amazing map painter like that, who you feel they actively search out, um, uh, you know, scenes from films to in, in, inspire what they do. Um, I'm, you know, I love film and I've, um, you know, for example, I remember seeing, um, in true grit when he's running back with um uh what's her name the girl in his arms through the cornfield what is that i think the actress's name is Haley. i can't remember the character Haley, yeah yeah um that's an incredible so you'd see that so that you have bright brightly lit yellow corner black sky mm-hmm. you'll see something like that and you're like i, I don't know that may come back out in my work at some mm-hmm. point but i don't i don't actively seek Not it out just yeah um i think um not really i'm i'm kind of sometimes i'm more um it's like i don't do i can enjoy music i I never do any music at all my brother's a musician he's a composer so i'm like i can just i I, if i go to see john water like i want to see john waterhouse exhibition Mm -hmm. in london i i panic i I, I, it's so amazing i just want to leave and run home and start painting so when when so with film i I just i of course i'm obsessed with film and i love it but i don't sit there with a sketch pad taking screen Um, grabs and (laughs) you know what i sometimes do very Mm -hmm. rarely but sometimes i'm like oh my god that's just amazing but Mm -hmm. but i think it'll go i'll never directly transfer it ever it'll it'll just because it's it would be quite a coincidence if it worked for something 
because it's all about story. You know, what's the story of of the the shape you're making, kind of thing. It's more painting, um, I think about it. Actually, it's more like Goya and Waterhouse and you know painters. A lot of students I, also had the question of is there a project you look on most fondly is there one in particular that you remember well that you enjoy the most that you think of most fondly when you look back um well star wars episode two is amazing and working with stuart on stuart craig and harry potter because he's just a brilliant designer and then um yeah all the ones i work with tim when i've got like i worked on uh pinocchio for tim but um then he decided not to do it so that was great fun but it never went it never happened um yeah usually i mean most um you get something out of most films that you work on um i've just come off blade runner that was just amazing is it which blade runner is it the animated series they're working on or the show it? no it's a, it's uh i think it's been announced hasn't it it's like a streaming show right yeah so it's um it's going on without me shall we say <laughs> but the few months i was on it was just absolutely amazing because we're in that you know films before they're going going into but in the pre-production period where you it's just exploratory and people aren't worried that's great uh i, I love working in pre-production that's exciting that Dermot Power's work is going to be influencing a Blade Runner uh, production. I'm I'm looking forward to it. I'm not sure it will, <laughs> but I had fun. I had fun trying. <laughs> Dermot, I have a quick question. Yeah. How how many hours we said you were putting in when you were starting the professional field every day? Uh, hours drawing, Nicholas. I was or? drawing. Sorry, that. Thank you, Charlie. Oh I was yeah, drawing. yeah. Oh well, I, when I was um, a comic artist, I was I had. I used to be watching TV and driving Charlotte, my partner, mad because when an ad break came on, I'd run over and do a bit of drawing and then sit down. I'd never, <laughs> I was crazy because just trying to keep up deadlines. Um, I do, I'm an early, I get up at six and I'm usually working by seven or half seven. I When I'm drawing, I don't, when I'm, when I'm doing 3D modeling and rendering, I can do that all day and night because it's puzzle solving. And in fact, the bit where I'm just painting that is tiny. It's just I can do that in the last 20 minutes just because I've done I've learned to get all the lighting, everything done, everything I want to say. And then I just bang it out, mess it up a little bit in for the meeting, because it's not it's about the design of the space. It's not about the art book and the cool thing. When I'm drawing, I find myself drifting off having cups of because I think I have these um half hour max it, it, it's it's like i'll fall off the ledge kind of thing it feels like you're on a tightrope you're like it's going well I, I don't know if you guys feel that but mm -hmm. it's going really well you've got this slight anxiety it's 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 gonna, I'm gonna fuck this up it's not gonna it's, I'm, I'm gonna lose it and it's going well it's going well and then oh, i'm gonna go and have a cup of tea because it starts to oh i can feel my focus drifting so i finally find I might do a long, you know, I, I work from half seven to maybe half seven in the evening, but then I go for a run at lunchtime, usually for an hour. Um, and if I'm drawing, I break it up. I'm, I wouldn't like to t say, pretend that I'm, you know, I start drawing and don't lift the pencil for 12 hours. It's not like that. It's, it's, it's a, it's a long enough day, but it's, um, yeah, I love, I love drawing. So it's not it's not a, it's not a hardship <laughs> as well thank you yeah cool well i think uh we've kept you for quite a while and i know it's getting late there dermot um That's we just want to again from all of us here on the panel thank you so much for taking the time out to chat with us it's been an yeah, absolute pleasure so and we learned a ton and i know the students are